Hello everyone, I'm Nitin and in this video, I'll be discussing what is a client-server architectural model, three-layer client-server architecture, three-tier client-server architecture, thin client and thick client, finally, advantages and disadvantages of the client-server architectural model. So, let's get started. First, we look at what is a client-server architectural model. Since the adoption of the World Wide Web and HTTP in the mid-1990s, the client-server architecture became the most commonly used architecture for communication and data transfer. It divides the system into two major subsystems or logical processes, client and server. Therefore, the client also refers to the client process and the server also refers to the server process that may run on the same machine or on different machines. The client machine or process sends a request to the server machine or process for various services and resources. The client normally provides basic presentation services. However, it could also provide some processing related services depending on the application area. The server hosts deliver and manages most of the services and resources to be consumed by the client. The server machine or process receives the request from the client, then processes it and sends it back to the client. The client server distributed system is represented by the diagram below where several servers are connected with each other in order to provide important functionalities of a distributed system. Now we are going to discuss two important terms in the client-server architecture, layer and tier, and try to clarify any confusion between the two. For this, we'll study three-layer and three-tier client-server architectures. So we start with the term layer in the three-layer client-server architecture. A layer refers to a functional division of an application or software, meaning that we can develop and manage an application into different logical components based on the separation of various functionalities. These different layers can be implemented on the same system or on different systems. The most common layers of the client-server architecture are presentation layer, business logic layer, and data layer, which form the three-layer architecture. However, an architecture may have different layers or more than three layers depending on the design requirements. Here, presentation our user interface layer is concerned with presenting information to users and managing interaction with users. Its main purpose is to display information to users and collect information from users. Next, business logic or middle layer is concerned with implementing the logic of the application and providing the required functionality to end users. Business logic is the set of rules that are required for running the application as per the guidelines set by the organization. Finally, data or database layer is concerned with storing required data and managing its related operations. In this layered architecture, each layer generally interact with the adjacent layer and this interaction continues until the process is completed. The main benefit of this layered architecture is that each application layer can be developed, managed, updated or scaled simultaneously as needed without impacting the other layers by a separate expert team. Now we look at the second term tier. A tier refers to a functional division of an application that runs on the infrastructure separate from the other functional divisions, meaning that we can distribute the various functionalities or simply layers on different machines. Layer is logical separation of functionalities, whereas tier is physical separation of functionalities. In other words, we can say tiers are the physical implementation of layers. As we have seen three functional layers in the three layer architecture, so each layer can be implemented on the separate infrastructure as a one tier. So, Presentation tier refers to the implementation of the presentation layer on the infrastructure separate from the other layers. Similarly, business logic tier refers to the implementation of the business logic layer on the infrastructure separate from the other layers. And data tier refers to the implementation of the data layer 
on the infrastructure separate from the other layers. Again, the client server architecture may have different tiers or more than three tiers depending on the design requirements. In the client server architecture, a client can be either a thin client or a thick client. So what are they? A thin client has minimum resources and is mainly designed to provide limited or fixed set of services. Whereas a thick client has greater resources and can perform several processing tasks in addition to provide basic services. Thin client and thick client can also refer to an application component where a thin client offers limited functionality and thick client offers significant or full functionality. Let's look at advantages of the client server architectural model. Firstly, centralization of control. In this model, Access, resources, data and operations are controlled by the dedicated server. So it is relatively efficient to manage the network and provide security. Secondly, it divides application processing across multiple layers or tiers and improves the development and management of applications. Next, scalability. Client server architecture is scalable and new servers or resources can be added to the network to cope with the increasing demand. Next, backup and recovery. In a client server model, data can be recovered more easily as compared to the decentralized or peer-to-peer -peer model. Finally, it reduces data replication as data is stored on the servers instead of each client, therefore reducing the amount of data replication as compared to the decentralized or peer-to-peer -peer model. Now look at disadvantages of the client server architectural model. Firstly, availability. The server must be online and available to clients at all times or the application simply will not work. Many things can impact server availability from hardware failures, software problems or operating system errors. Secondly, high load or traffic congestions is another recurring problem with the client server architecture due to high load or unexpected demand on the server. If too many clients make requests from the same server, it will result in crashes or slowing down the connection. Next, cost. The cost involved in setting up and maintaining the server in the client server architecture is usually higher as compared to the decentralized or peer-to-peer -peer model. Finally, maintenance of servers is a very complex task as servers provide services continuously. Therefore, any problem must be resolved immediately without any delay and that requires specialized network engineers. This concludes my presentation and thanks for watching my video.